when you stay with the breath, the breath is medicine for the mind. And it helps the body, too, when you work with the breath energies in the body. As John Lee says, if you have heavy diseases, they become lighter. If you have light diseases, they can disappear, at least for the time being. That gives you more room and more energy to work with, because the real work is in the mind. If the mind's not a problem, the body's not a problem. The thing is, the mind has lots of problems, lots of diseases. There's greed, there's aversion, there's delusion. Some of the lists go on to 10, 15 members. But they all come down to the fact that the mind causes itself a lot of trouble. It wants to find happiness and does everything it can to find happiness, and yet it turns around and harms itself. And so the medicine we're dealing with here, or using to treat the mind, is to treat the things that the mind has imposed on itself. We think of all the stresses of living in the human world. But again, there are people who can live in the world and not suffer at all. They are hunts, don't have to suffer at all, even though they still have human bodies and, and deal in the human realm. That shows that the real suffering is not coming from outside, it's coming from within. So you have to look at your own attachments, look at your own clinging, your craving, your greed, aversion, and delusion in all their various forms. And unfortunately, the, the medicine for treating all these different things comes down to one basic thing, get the mind quiet so it can gain some insight into its own actions. As you get the mind quiet, that's a lot of the medicine right there. The, you get the mind still, it can soothe a lot of its a lot of its wounds, a lot of its rashes. And then you can dig deeper. Why is it the mind keeps on wounding itself again and again? You can treat the disease and then turn around and cause more trouble. It's like someone who's had a bad disease and they know that they're allergic to certain foods, but as soon as they recover they go back to those foods again. That's the way the mind is, if it hasn't been trained with discernment. That's why concentration on its own is not enough. You've got to use your discernment to figure out why is it that the mind keeps going for things that are harmful. And in some cases, even though it knows they're harmful, it still goes for them. Why is that? So you get the mind really quiet so you can see the answer to these questions. Okay, that's when you learn how not to inflict any more diseases on the mind, any more wounds on the mind. As for the wounds that come outside, those will disappear. So think of this as treatment for the mind, in which you're the doctor and the patient at the same time. So try to give yourself as good a treatment as you can manage. And remember that the problem is not coming from outside, it's coming from within. So the doctor has to look at his own or her own behavior. That's what makes it difficult, but that's all what, also what makes it possible for you to gain the discernment that finally liberates you. Because nobody else can do that work for you. You've got to do the work yourself. You can get examples from other people and lessons from other people. But the actual work is what the mind does with itself, the skills it develops. But it's all for the true health of the mind, the true well-being of the mind. Keep that in mind. When talking about people should do this and should do this when they're meditating, it's not because somebody outside is just giving orders. It's because they found this is the way things work. But it's all for your true happiness your true well-being.